There's people that can be stone cold and lie to you right in your face, but yet their brain tells the truth. My name is Dan Ribikoff. I'm a private investigator and a polygraph examiner. I'm Joel Reicheter, and I teach uh, physiology to um, students who are preparing to become polygraph examiners. Everybody knows what the lie detector or the polygraph is, and it's used extensively by the NSA, the Secret Service, the CIA, the FBI, as well as almost every law enforcement agency in the civilized world. Polygraph is structured on fear fear of detection because of the consequences of the truth coming out. Lie detector. Uh, there's no such device. If that was the case, we could close all the courts, probably fire all the attorneys and just give a lie detector. It's a casual social term that's used, but it doesn't have any scientific basis. What we do have is the technology to determine with a high degree of probability truth from deception by monitoring the various body responses to a series of questions that have to be carefully crafted. We're going to ask you questions that we know are true. Are you sitting down now? And then we're going to ask you questions that we don't know. And we're going to look to see how you react and how much energy your brain calls for. When you tell the truth, you use your memory. When you lie, you must use your imagination. Probably the best analogy would be your hard drive and your processor. When you use your processor in the computer, you notice your fan comes on because you start using more energy. It's the same thing with your body. Your brain is going to call for more energy when you lie versus giving me the truth when you answer your name or today's date or whether or not you're sitting down. Polygraphs are done by comparison. We compare other reactions against the unknown. If you're the guilty person and you perceive some questions as more threatening, you're going to get a bigger response compared to other questions that are less threatening. Well, this reaction is significant more so than the other reaction, so therefore we're going to say deception indicated, which simplifying it would be, you know, no deception indicated, deception indicated, meaning that there's a dramatic reaction compared to your known truths. Is your name John? Are you sitting down? The bigger the issue, the bigger the lie, the bigger the reaction is really the way it works. How I conduct the interview, the question decisions I make, um, they're based in science, but there's, there's some art in it. Reluctantly, I'm saying that. I wish there wasn't. It's almost like an x-ray. Sometimes you see a shadow and you say, well, you know what, maybe it's a spot. We have to biopsy it. And sometimes it's crystal clear. There's both mental countermeasures and physical countermeasures, such as, for instance, uh, counting numbers backwards by three, starting with a hundred, squeezing of the buttocks, pressing toes down on the floor in your shoe. Of course, the more primitive ones is holding your breath or altering your breath patterns. People try biting the inside of their gums, biting their lips, to basically try to cause reactions on certain questions to deceive the polygraph instrument. It's very difficult to get it to look natural. Just to read about the countermeasures and then have a naive subject practice them during a polygraph test usually is ineffective. If you haven't sat in front of a polygraph machine and tried to make these reactions look natural, you're making the needles fly off the charts. That's in itself a sign of deception. There's only one reason to try to beat a polygraph test. You're lying. <laughs>